Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Om Ajnana Timadandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vande Hang Shiguro Shri Yuta Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Trubyascha Kripa Sindhubhivacha Patitanam Pavanebhya Vaishnavebhya Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Good morning to all. Hope everyone is having a beautiful Sunday in Krishna consciousness. And today we're going to be reading from the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita from the Adi Lila, excuse me, chapter 8, the author receives the orders of Krishna and Guru. And Thursday was the Avir Bhav Mahotsava. Avir Bhav means, it's another way of saying appearance of Shri Vrindavan Das Thakur who is the Vyasadev in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela. Actually, she's the Vyasadev and one of Krishna and Balaram's dear most friends, Kusuma Pita. Uh, he also entered uh, basically into Vrindavan Das Thakur. And so she's the Vrindavan Das Thakur he is Krishna and Balaram's friend, and he's also Srila Vyasadeva. And just as Srila Vyasadeva wrote Srimad Bhagavatam, he wrote a book called Sri Chaitanya Mangala, which would then later become Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, which discusses the hmm, earlier Leela of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, when we look at Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela or transcendental pastimes, his first 24 years are known as the Adi Leela, and the last 24 years is known as the Sesha Leela. And Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami has split up the Sesha Leela into two parts the Madhya Leela which mostly talks about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's travels to South India and Vrindavan, Jagannath Puri Rathiyatra festival. And then the Antialila is the later pastimes where he stays in Jagannath Puri and does not leave. And so where Vrindavan Das Thakur, he very much focuses on the earlier Adi Leela and Krishna Skaviraj Goswami 
focuses on the uh, Shesha Lila. And together, these books give us a complete overview of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leelas. We say overview because Ananta Shesh, who has thousands and thousands of mouths, is eternally glorifying Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, Krishna's Leela, and he has still not reached an end. So just as Krishna is unlimited and his pastimes are unlimited, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna, his pastimes are also very much unlimited. But you'll see how Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in the later part of this chapter, and when you go through the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, I believe it's something over like maybe 30 times where uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami will say, Rindavan Das Thakur has elaborated on this. Um, I'm just chewing on his remnants and gives all glory to Vrindavan Das Thakur. So we'll begin today's reading after that short introduction about Vrindavan Das Thakur. So again, reading from Adi Lila, Chapter 8. The author receives the orders of Krishna Guru if anybody wants to read along at home. Verse 1. Vande Chaitanya Devam Tam Bhagavantam Yadi Chaya Prasabham Narti Te Chitram Lake Range Jadopyaham. I offer my respects to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by whose desire I've become like a dancing dog and suddenly taken to the writing of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, although I am a fool. Jaya Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Gora Chandra, Jaya Jaya Paramananda Jaya Nityananda. I offer my, let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is known as Gora Sundar. I also offer my respectful obeisances unto Nityananda Prabhu, who is always very joyful. Jaya Jaya Dvaita Charya Kripa Maya, Jaya Jaya Gadadhara Pandita Mahashaya. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Advaita Acharya, who is very merciful, and also to that great personality, Gadadhar Pandit the learned scholar. Jaya Jaya Srivasadi Yata Bhaktagana Pranata Yaha Iha Vandon Sabara Charana. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Srivas Thakur and all the other devotees of the Lord. I fall down to offer them respect. I worship their lotus feet. Purport. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami teaches us first to offer respect to the Panchatattva, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Prabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu, and Srivas Prabhu, and other devotees. We must strictly follow the principle of offering our respects to the Panchatattva as summarized in the mantra. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda. At the beginning of every function in preaching, especially before chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. We must chant the Panchatattva's names and offer our respects to them. Text 5. Mukakavitva kareyan sabara smarane bangu giri lange andha deke taragane. By remembering the lotus feet of the Panchatattva, a dumb man can become a poet, a lame man can cross mountains, and a blind man can see the stars in the sky. Purport. 
In Vaishnav philosophy, there are three ways for perfection, namely sadhana siddha, perfection attained by executing devotional service according to the rules and regulations, nitya siddha, eternal perfection attained by never forgetting Krishna at any time, and kripa siddha, perfection attained by the mercy of the spiritual master or another Vaishnav. Kaviraj Goswami here stresses kripa siddha, perfection by the mercy of superior authorities. This mercy does not depend on the qualifications of a devotee. By such mercy, even if a devotee is dumb, he can speak or write to glorify the Lord splendidly. Even if lame, he can cross mountains, and even if blind, he can see the stars in the sky. Uh, reading this and, and, and hearing about Kripa Siddha, um, earlier this week, uh, I was talking to Mother Nidra, and she was telling me about uh, Vrindavan Vilasini. And I heard a talk that she gave and about her early days in ISKCON. And just to hear her talk about, you know, her dedicated life to book distribution is really amazing. I and mean, she was talking about how when she joined LA, it was 35 women who were living in one room and had one bathroom. And she said that they barely lived in that room anyway, but they were going out on, on book distribution. And she was talking about how, you know, she was her and so many others, they were, felt empowered by Srila Prabhupada. They were distributing thousands and thousands of books and in her talk, she every time she, you know, would talk about a service that she had performed, she would say it was all by Srila Prabhupada's mercy. You know, so that Kripa Siddha. And you hear that from, you know, so many Prabhupada disciples that they felt that Srila Prabhupada was really empowering them to do any type of service. It wasn't their own qualification. And it's very much going back to Kaviraj Goswami praying to the Panchatattva. If we pray and we try to please the Vaishnavas and please Krishna, then we can do very amazing things, even if we are not materially qualified. Even if we have no qualification for particular service, Krishna will give us that qualification. Text 6. E sabha namane ye pandita sakala tasabhara vidyapata beka kolahala. The education cultivated by so-called learned scholars who do not believe these statements of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita is like the tumultuous croaking of frogs. Purport. The croaking of the frogs in the rainy season resounds very loudly in the forest, with the result that snakes, hearing the croaking in the darkness, approach the frogs and swallow them. Similarly, the so-called educational vibrations of the tongues of university professors who do not have spiritual knowledge is like the croaking of frogs. Eisabhanamane yeba. Kare Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Kripa Nahitare, Nahitara Gati. One who does not accept the glories of the Panchatattva, but still makes a show of devotional service to Krishna, can never achieve the mercy of Krishna or advance to the ultimate goal. Purport If one is seriously interested in Krishna conscious activities, he must be ready to follow the rules and regulations laid down by the Acharyas. And he must understand their conclusions. The Shast Shastra says, Dharmasya tatvam nihitam guhayam mahajano yena gita sapanta. Mahabharat vanaparva 313-117. It is very difficult to understand the secret of Krishna consciousness, but one who advances by the instruction of the previous acharyas 
and follows in the footsteps of his predecessors, and the line of disciplic succession will have success. Others will not. Shudhanaratom Das Thakur says in this connection, Chadiya Vaishnav Seva Nistara Peyeche Keba. Unless one serves the spiritual master and acharyas, one cannot be liberated. Elsewhere, he says, Echai Gosai Yanra. Muri taradas tansabara parure namora panchagras. I simply accept a person who follows in the footsteps of the six Goswamis, and the dust of such a person's lotus feet is my food. Text eight. Purveyeche jarasanda adi rajagana veda dharma kari kare vishnura pujana. Formerly, kings like Jarasandha, the father-in-law of Kangsa, strictly followed the Vedic rituals, thus worshipping Lord Vishnu. Purport. In these verses, the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, is very seriously stressing the importance of worship of the Panchatattva. If one becomes a devotee of Gaurasundar or Krishna, but does not give importance to the Panchatattva, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gauda Bhaktivrinda, his activities are considered to be offenses, or in the words of Srila Rupa Goswami, Utpata, disturbances. One must therefore be ready to offer due respects to the Panchatattva, before becoming a devotee of Lord Gorsunda or of Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 9. Krishna nahi mane tate daitya karimani, chaitanya na manile taiche daitya tare jani. One who does not accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is certainly a demon. Similarly, anyone who does not accept Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Krishna, the same Lord, the same Supreme Lord, is also to be considered a demon, Daitya. Purport. Formerly, there were kings like Jarasandha, who strictly followed the Vedic rituals, acted as charitable, competent kshatriyas, possessed all kshatriya qualities, and were even obedient to the Brahminical culture, but who did not accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jarasandha attacked Krishna many times, and each time, of course, he was defeated. Like Jarasandha, any man who performs Vedic rituals but does not accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead must be considered an asura or demon. Similarly, one who does not accept Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Krishna himself is also a demon. This is the conclusion of authoritative scriptures. Therefore, both so-called devot devotion to Gora Sundar, without devotional service to Krishna and so-called Krishna Bhakti, without devotional service to Gora Sundar are non-devotional activities. If one wants to be successful on the path of Krishna consciousness, he must be thoroughly conscious of the personality of Gora Sundar as well as the personality of Krishna. Knowing the personality, Gaurasundar means knowing the personalities of Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi, Gauda, Bhaktivrinda. The author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, pursuant to the authorities, stresses this principle for perfection in Krishna consciousness. I'll read quickly one verse from Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat that I read the other day that was quite powerful. It's in the same line as what Kaviraj Goswami is saying here. Vrindavan Das Thakur says, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Name Vimukha Ye Jana Nischaya Janiya Se Papi Bhuta Gana. Know for certain that anyone who is averse to chanting the name of Sri Krishna Chaitanya is a sinful, ghostly, haunted person. <laughs> so if we can get people to chant the name of Garanga and Sri Krishna Chaitanya, 
then they immediately become non-sinful and not ghostly haunted. So this is the importance of Harinam Sankirtan and hearing Harikata, spreading Krishna consciousness, is that people wake up to their real transcendental nature. Text 10. More namani le saba loka habe nasha iti lagi kripadra prabukari la sanyasa. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought, unless people accept me, they will all be destroyed. Thus, the merciful Lord accepted the sanyas order. Purport. In Srimad Bhagavatam 12.351, it is said, Kirtanadi Vakrishnasya Mukta Sangha Param Vrajet. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, or Lord Krishna's name, one is liberated and goes back home, back to Godhead. This Krishna consciousness must be achieved through the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One cannot be complete in Krishna consciousness unless he accepts Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates as the only means for success. It is because of these considerations that the Lord accepted sannyas, for thus people would offer him respect and very quickly come to the platform of Krishna consciousness. Since Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, inaugurated the Krishna consciousness movement, Without his mercy, one cannot be elevated to the transcendental platform of Krishna consciousness. Text 11. Sanyasi budye more karibe namaskar tatapi kandibe dukkha paibe nistar. If a person offers obeisances to me, even due to accepting me only as an ordinary sanyasi, his material distresses will diminish and he will ultimately get liberation. Purport. Krishna is so merciful that he always thinks of how to liberate the conditioned souls from the material platform. <laughs> That's such a beautiful sentence to really take deep into our hearts that Krishna is always thinking of our welfare. Krishna is thinking of everyone and how to get them back to their transcendental position. It is for this reason that Krishna incarnates as clearly indicated in the Bhagavad Gita 4.7, yada yada hidarmasya, glanir bhavati bharata, abhyutana madharmasya tadatmanam sarjamiham. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice, so descendant of Bharat, and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. Krishna always protects the living entities in many ways. He comes himself, he sends his own confidential devotees, and he leaves behind him shastras like the Bhagavad Gita. Why? It is so that people may take advantage of the benediction to be liberated from the clutches of Maya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted sannyas so that even a foolish person who accepted him as an ordinary sannyasi would offer him respect, for this would help diminish his material distresses and ultimately liberate him from the material clutches. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati points out in this connection that Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined form of Sri Radha and Krishna. Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahe Anya. Therefore, when fools considered Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be an ordinary human being and thus treated him disrespectfully, the merciful Lord, in order to deliver these offenders, accepted sannyasa so that they would offer him obeisances, accepting him as a sannyasi. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted sannyas to bestow great mercy on people in general who cannot appreciate him as Radha and Krishna themselves. Which is really amazing to think about how many, 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 many people, right? uh, Srila Rupa Goswami actually states that it's very, very rare soul who can actually understand Radha Krishna Tattva. 
And so Radha and Krishna have combined in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to, and we'll read some verses about this, display a Darya Leela, where one can actually easily understand Radha and Krishna through the worship of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, for 99% of us, we're very much not qualified to enter into the realm of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. But we get the exact same, actually, no, we get even more and more mercy by just focusing on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is non-different than Radha and Krishna. And Narutam Das Thakur and so many Acharyas have explicitly elaborated on this point that those who worship Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they immediately become an associate of Shri Sri Radha and Krishna. Hena Kripa Maya Chaitanya Nabha Bhajaye Jana Sarvotama Haileya Tare Asure Ganana. One who does not show respect unto this merciful Lord, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or does not worship him, should be considered a demon, even if he is very much exalted in human society. So very strong words by Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami here, because this is also his emotional outpouring. Right? And we see how he's, you know, these writers, Vrindavan Das Thakur, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, they're the epitome of humility but when it comes to glorifying the Lord, these emotional outbursts are coming out. So it might seem a little harsh to the mundane mind, but he, this is a way of actually uh, really outpouring his heart. Who's not going to take shelter of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Purport. So the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj says in this connection, O oh, living entities, simply engage yourselves in Krishna consciousness. This is the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya preached this cult, instructing the philosophy of Krishna consciousness in his eight verses or Shikshastika. And he said, Iha haite sarva siddhi haibe tomara. By chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one will get all perfection in life. Therefore, one who does not show him respect or cannot appreciate his mercy despite all these merciful gestures is an asura or opponent of bona fide devotional service to Lord Vishnu, even though he may be very much exalted in human society. The word asura refers to one who is against devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. It should be noted that unless one worships Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is useless to become a devotee of Krishna. And unless one worships Krishna, it is also useless to become a devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Such devotional service is to be understood to be a product of Kali Yuga. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur remarks in this connection that atheist smartas or worshippers of the five, five kinds of demigods Worship Lord Vishnu for little satisfaction in material success, but have no respect for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thinking him to be one of the ordinary living entities, they discriminate between Gora Sundar and Sri Krishna. Such understanding is also demoniac and is against the conclusions of the Acharyas. Such a conclusion is a product of Kali Yuga. Text 13. Taiva Puna Kohon Udva Bahuhana Chaitanya Nityananda Bhaja Kutarka Chadiya. Therefore, I say again, lifting my arms, O oh, fellow human beings, please worship Sri Chaitanya and Nityananda without false arguments. Purport Because a person who performs Krishna Bhakti but does not understand Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Prabhu Nityananda will simply waste his time. The author, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, requests 
everyone to take to the worship of Sri Chaitanya and Nityananda Prabhu and the Panchatattva. He assures everyone that any person who does so will be successful in Krishna consciousness. So we have the words of Krishna Kaviraj Goswami. All we have to do is worship Sri Chaitanya and Nityananda Prabhu and will be successful. We have his assurance. <laughs> so I'm going to, hmm, yeah, very important verse coming up. Text 14. Yadiva Tarkika Kahe Tarka Se Pramana Tarka Shastre Siddhi Siddhaye Se Se Vyamana. Logicians say, unless one gains and Unless one gains understanding through logic and argument, how can one decide upon a worshipable deity? Shri Krishna Chaitanya Doya Kara Ha Vichara Vichara Karite Chite Pabe Chamatkara. You are indeed interested in logic and argument. Kindly apply it to the mercy of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you do so, you will find it to be strikingly. Wonderful. I'm going to kind of skip ahead a little bit so that we can focus on Vrindavan Das Thakur, but there's a beautiful part here which very importantly talks about the offenses to the chanting of the holy name, which are very important for us to daily meditate on, the 10 offenses to the holy name. And how, uh, yeah, right here it says, uh, text 22, we'll skip to text 22, whether he is offensive or inoffensive, uh, inoffensive, anyone who even now chants Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda is immediately overwhelmed with ecstasy and tears fill his eyes. Purport. The Prakrita Sahajyas who chant Nitagor Radhesham have very little knowledge of the Bhagavad conclusion, and they hardly follow the Vaishnava rules and regulations. And yet, because they chant Bhaja Nitagor, their chanting immediately evokes tears and other signs of ecstasy. Although they do not know the principles of Vaishnava philosophy and are not very much advanced in education, by these symptoms they attract many men to become their followers. Their ecstatic tears will, of course, help them in the long run, for as soon as they come in contact with a pure devotee, their lives will become successful. Even in the beginning, however, because they are chanting the holy names of Nittai Gaur, their swift advancement in the path of love of Godhead is very prominent, very prominently visible. Text 23. Simply by talking of Nityananda Prabhu, one awakens his love for Krishna. Thus, all his bodily limbs are agitated by ecstasy and tears flow from his eyes like the waters of the Ganges. Skip ahead a little more. Talking about, again, the offenses to the holy name. And by chanting the holy names of Chaitanya and Nityananda, one is able to overcome these offenses. And therefore, Srila Prabhupada stresses that that's why we should very much uh, chant the Panchatattva. So, 838, yeah, I'll read this verse in purport. Very important purport. So, this is text 31. But if one only chants with some slight faith the holy names of Lord Chaitanya Nityananda, very quickly he is cleansed of all offenses. Thus, as soon as he chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he feels the ecstasy of love for God. Purport. So the Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur remarks in this connection, that if one takes shelter of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, follows their instructions to become more tolerant than the tree and humbler than the blade of grass, 
And in this way, chants the holy name of the Lord. Very soon he achieves the platform of transcendental loving service to the Lord, and tears appear in his eyes. There are offenses to be considered in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But there are no such considerations in chanting the names of Gaur Nityananda. Therefore, if one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but his life is still full of sinful activities, it will be very difficult for him to achieve the platform of loving service to the Lord. But if in spite of being an offender, one chants the holy names of Gaur Nityananda, he is very quickly freed from the reactions to his offenses. Therefore, one should first approach Lord Chaitanya Nityananda or worship Guru Garanga and then come to the stage of worshiping Radha Krishna. In our Krishna consciousness movement, our students are first advised to worship Guru Garanga, and then when they are somewhat advanced, the Radha Krishna deity is installed and they are engaged in the worship of the Lord. One should first take shelter of Gaur Nityananda in order to reach ultimately Radha Krishna. Shudhanartam Das Thakur sings in this connection. Goranga Bolite Habe Pula Kasharira Hari Hari Bolite Nayane Babe Nira Arkabe Nitai Chande Karuna Kari Hibe Sangsara Vasana Mora Kabe Tucha Habe Bishaya Chadia Kabe Shuda Habe Mahana Kabe Hama Hariba in the beginning, one should very regularly chant Sri Gora Sundar's holy name and then chant the holy name of Lord Nityananda. Thus, one's heart will be cleansed of impure desires for material enjoyment. Then one can approach Vrindavan Dham to worship Lord Krishna. Unless one is favored by Lord Chaitanya Nityananda, there is no need to go to Vrindavan. For unless one's mind is purified, he cannot see Vrindavan, even if he goes there. Actually, going to Vrindavan involves taking shelter of the six Goswamis by reading the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, and the other books that they have given. So if you want to go to Vrindavan, Start reading the books of the six Goswamis, starting with Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu or Nectar of Devotion. In this way, one can understand the transcendental loving affairs between Radha and Krishna. Kabe, Hama Bhujaba, Se Yugala Pariti. The conjugal love between Radha and Krishna is not an ordinary human affair, it is fully transcendental. In order to understand Radha and Krishna, worship them and engage in their loving service, one must be guided by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, and the six Goswamis, Lord Chaitanya's direct disciples. For an ordinary man, worship of Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Prabhu or the Panchatattva is easier than worship of Radha and Krishna. Unless one is very fortunate, he should not be induced to worship Radha Krishna directly. A neophyte student who is not sufficiently educated or enlightened should not indulge in the worship of Sri Radha and Krishna or the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Even if he does so, he cannot get the desired result. One should therefore chant the names of Nittai Gaur and should worship them without false prestige. Since everyone within this material world is more or less influenced by sinful activities, in the beginning it is essential that one take to the worship of Guru Garanga and ask their favor, for thus despite all his disqualifications, one will very soon become qualified to worship the Radha Krishna Vigraha. It should be noted in this connection that the holy names of Lord Krishna and Gaurasundar are both identical with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, one should not consider one name to be more potent than the other. Considering the position of the people of this age, however, the chanting of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name is more essential than the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most magnanimous incarnation and his mercy is very easily achieved. 
Therefore, one must first take shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by chanting Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda. By serving Gaur Nityananda, one is freed from the entanglements of material existence and thus becomes qualified to worship the Radha Krishna deity. Text 32, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the independent Supreme Personality of Godhead is greatly magnanimous. Unless one worships him, one can never be liberated. Purport, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur here remarks that one should not give up the worship of Radha Krishna to worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By worshiping either Radha Krishna or Lord Chaitanya alone, one cannot become advanced. One should not try to supersede the instructions of the six Goswamis, for they are acharyas and very dear to Lord Chaitanya. Therefore, Naratam Das Thakur sings, Rupa Raghuna Pade Haibe Akuti Kabe Hama Bujaba Se Yugala Priti. One must be a submissive student of the six Goswamis, from Shri Rupa Goswami to Raghunath Das Goswami. Not following their instructions, but imagining how to worship Gorsundar and Radha Krishna is a great offense, as a result of which one clears a path to hell. If one neglects the instructions of the six Goswamis and yet becomes a so-called devotee of Radha Krishna, he merely criticizes the real devotees of Radha Krishna. As a result of speculation, he considers Gorasundar to be an ordinary devotee and therefore cannot make progress in serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Radha Krishna. Text 33. Ore Mudha Loka Suna Chaitanya Mangala Chaitanya Mahima Yate Jani Be Sakala. O fools, Mudha Loka, just read Sri Chaitanya Mangala. By reading this book, you can understand all the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Purport Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur's Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat was originally entitled Sri Chaitanya Mangala. But when Srila Locha and Das Thakur later wrote another book named Sri Chaitanya Mangala, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur changed the name of his own book, which is now therefore known as Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. The life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very elaborately described in the Chaitanya Bhagavad, and Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami has already informed us that in, it is, that in his Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, he has described whatever Vrindavan Das Thakur has not mentioned. This acceptance of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami indicates his acceptance of the disciplic succession. A writer of transcendental literature never tries to surpass the previous acharyas. Text 34. <coughs> As Vyasadeva has compiled all the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Srimad Bhagavatam, Thakur Vrindavandas has depicted all the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Thakur Vrindavandas has composed Sri Chaitanya Mangala. Hearing this book annihilates all misfortune. A very beautiful verse here because he uses the word Chaitanya Mangala, which Mangala means all auspicious and Amangala, inauspiciousness. So Chaitanya Mangala will remove all of our inauspiciousness. By reading, <clears throat> by reading Sri Chaitanya Mangala, one can understand all the glories and truths of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda and come to the ultimate conclusion of devotional service to Lord Krishna. So we see how Vrindavan Das Thakur, he was a disciple of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Actually, he was the last disciple to be initiated by Sri Nityananda Prabhu. And so in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, if we look at how much Lord Nityananda Prabhu is glorified, it's quite amazing. Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat is also a, a glorification of Lord Nityananda.
in text 37 here, it says, in Sri Chaitanya Mangala, later known as Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur has given the conclusion and essence of devotional service by quoting the authoritative statements of Srimad Bhagavatam. If even a great atheist hears Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, he immediately becomes a great devotee. The subject matter of this book is so sublime that it appears that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has personally spoken through the writings of Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur. I offer millions of obeisances unto the lotus feet of Vrindavan Das Thakur. No one else could write such a wonderful book for the deliverance of all fallen souls. Narayani eternally eats the remnants of the food of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the Vrindavan Das Thakur was born of her womb. Purport. In text 43 of the Gorgonadesh Tipika, book written by Kavi Karnapur, that describes all the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and who they previously were, there's the following statement regarding Narayani. When Lord Krishna was a child, he was nursed by a woman named Ambika, who had a younger sister named Kil Kilambika. During the time of Lord Chaitanya's incarnation, the same Kilambika used to eat the remnants of food left by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That Kilambika was Narayani, who was a niece of Srivas Thakur's. Later on, when she grew up and married, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur was born from her womb. A devotee of Lord Sri Krishna is celebrated in terms of devotional service rendered to the Lord. Thus, we know Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur is the son of Narayani. So we know also Narayani, when Srivas Thakur was afraid of being captured by the Muslim government, right? There was rumors that they were going to send ships and take Srivas Thakur and his family away. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to his home and reassured him that even if they tried to take him away, that all of the, the soldiers, the king, the uh, priests of the Islam faith, all of them, they would be induced to chant the holy names by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they would experience intense ecstasy. And he looked at Narayani, who was a young girl then, and said, chant the holy names. And Narayani chanted the holy names and immediately went into divine rapture. Um, great devotional ecstasy. And then later on, she got to eat the remnants of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and received so much mercy from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Vrindavan Das Thakur was born from her. And skipping a little ahead here. Srila uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur. So, we, we see how in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, right, he glorifies Lord Nityananda and gives the childhood pastimes of Lord Nityananda and so many other pastimes, talks greatly about Haridas Thakur, and even ends with the, he ends Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat glorifying the Rag Marg, the spontaneous platform of devotional service through Pundarik Vidyanidhi when Pundrik Vidyanidhi goes to Jagannath Puri. And in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, he glorifies so many associates of Lord Chaitanya that he has to um, uh, worry about the book becoming too great. Right? If, if you write one book about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Again, an Shesh is constantly glorified. You'll get a huge, massive book. So Vrindavan Das Thakur said that he saw them to be so extensive that he later felt that some had not been properly described. So parts of Chaitanya Bhagavat became so extensive. And he said later on, somebody will come and glorify Lord Chaitanya. He ecstatically described the pastimes of Lord Nityananda, but the later pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained untold, which is what we talked about in the beginning of today's class, the two Leelas, Adi Leela, Sesha Leela. And so in Vrindavan, Radha Govinda are worshipped 
underneath the beautiful transcendental uh, says here uh, underneath desire trees on a golden throne bedecked with jewels. There sits Govindaji and the chief servitor of the Govindadev temple at that time was Haridas Pandit. His qualities and fame are known all over the world. Haridas Pandit, he was gentle, tolerant, peaceful, magnanimous, grave, sweet in his words and very sober in his endeavors. He was respectful to everyone and worked for the benefit of all. Diplomacy, envy, and jealousy were unknown to his heart. He was full of these beautiful qualities. Ananta Acharya was a disciple of Gadadhar Pandit. His body was always absorbed in love of Godhead. It was magnanimous and advanced in all respects. Ananta Acharya was a reservoir of all good qualities. No one can estimate how great he was. Pandit Haridas was his beloved disciple. So we have Gadadhar Pandit. His disciple was Anantacharya, and Anantacharya's disciple was Haridas Pandit, who became the chief servitor of Sri Sri Radha Govinda in Vrindavan. Pandit Haridas had great faith in Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, therefore he took great satisfaction in knowing about their pastimes and qualities. He always accepted the good qualities of Vaishnavas and never found fault in them. He engaged his heart and soul only to satisfy the Vaishnavas. He always heard the reading of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, and all the other Vaishnavas used to hear it by his grace. Like the full moon, he illuminated the entire assembly of Vaishnavas by speaking Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, and by the nectar of his qualities, he increased the transcendental bliss. By his causeless mercy, he ordered me to write about the later, late, later pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Govinda Gosani, who was a disciple of Kashishvar Goswani, uh, he was also there. And Yadavacharya Gosani, a constant associate of Srila Rupa Goswami, was also very enthusiastic in hearing and chanting about Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Bugarba Gosan, Gosani, a disciple of Pandit Gosani, so disciple of Gadadhar Pandit, was always engaged in topics regarding Lord Chaitanya, knowing nothing else. Among his disciples were Chaitanya Das, Mukunda Nanda Chakravarti, and Krishna Das. Among the disciples of Anantacharya was Shiva Nanda Chakravarti, in whose heart Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda constantly dwelled. In Vrindavan, there was also many other great devotees, all of whom desired to hear the later pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. By their mercy, all these devotees ordered me to write of the last pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because of their order only, although I am shameless, I have attempted to write this Chaitanya Charitamrita. And so he becomes empowered by all these Vaishnavas who are absorbed in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. And, and think about, you know, we, we talked about Radha and Krishna. Gadadhar Pandit is Srimati Radharani. And these disciples of Gadadhar Pandit, this line of devotees of Gadadhar Pandit, they're all absorbed in the highest mellows of devotional service. They're taking shelter of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. And when we Think about how live streaming is such a big thing, right, these days. You have YouTubers, TikTokers, anybody on social media. There's a lot of people who are constantly live streaming. Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. By the mercy of these great devotees, we're getting a live stream of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I just wanted to end by reading such an amazing, um, amazing glorification of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he wrote 
the Gaudiya Bhashya, which is a commentary on Vrindavan Das Thakur's Chaitanya Bhagavad. And as Tushta and I kind of make it a point, it's always very important to read the works of the Acharyas with commentary, right? Just by reading verses, we can sometimes become uh, thrown off or confused about what's actually trying to be conveyed. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he's written a very beautiful commentary on Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. It's published for all of us to read. And in the beginning, he gives a very beautiful glorification of Chaitanya Bhagavad. So I just wanted to read a few verses here. This is how he begins his commentary. The worshipable Lord and his devotee eat, enjoy each other's association as Radha and Krishna reveal their sweet pastimes. The combined form of Radha and Krishna, Lord Sri Chaitanya, is the shelter of the fallen souls and the personification of Adarya, magnanimity and vipralamba bhav, service and separation. When the confidential devotee of Sri Gora, Sri Ramananda Roy, saw with divine eyes that Gora is the combined form of Radha and Krishna, Mahabhav and Rasaraj, he was not able to see the sannyasi form of Krishna. Being absorbed in the mood of Radha, Krishna forgets himself and exhibits her dazzling complexion. The conjugal pastimes of the Lord are not manifest in his magnanimous pastimes. Vrindavan Das Thakur teaches us that one should not labor hard to find the conjugal pastimes of the Lord in his magnanimous pastimes. Lord Krishna, who enchants the heart of Gandharvika and who bestows mercy on the qualified devotees, does not belong to anyone other than Radharani. The perfection of attaining his lotus feet is achieved by serving Sri Chaitanya, who is the ocean of mercy and friend of the poor. If one hears the topics of Sri Chaitanya Nityananda, the pangs of one's heart are certainly destroyed forever. Sri Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Prabhu Ki Jai. Chaitanya Bhagavat Ki Jai, Shri Vrindavan Das Thakur Ki Jai. Hmm. There is, ah, Tara said, Hare Krishna, could you please elaborate on the full meaning, extent of Guru Garanga? I hear that so much, but I've never fully understood exactly. Thank you. So, yeah, Guru Garanga is the first part of Guru Guranga Gandharvika Giridhari. So if we think about how our iPhones are on a 4G, 5G, right? So we have this 4G connection from our phone and it allows us to connect with so many others. So Guru Goranga Gandharvaka Giridhari. This is our 4G connection. So we first approach Guru, who then connects us with Garanga, and Garanga then connects us with Radha Krishna, otherwise known as Gandharvika, and Giridhari, one who holds up Govardhan. So when we say Guru Goranga, it's a focus on the relationship between our spiritual master and our spiritual master is an eternal associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And yeah, so Guru Garanga, we uh, first approach them and then are able to approach Radha and Krishna as Srila Prabhupada elaborated in his purports. Is that okay, Tara? Krishna. Any other comments or reflections on today's reading?
All right, Ms. Kuntabu, thank you so much, obeisances. Um, you know how we're advised to um, read the Bhagavatam from first canto through 12 uh, systematically. So uh, one uh, congregational person was uh, curious about Sri uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, you know, liking the pastimes, maybe that come in the later part, uh, but maybe not having established the tattva from the beginning, Hari Lila. So is it the same? They were wondering, is it the same recommendation that really I should study Hari Lila first, get the tattva, and then proceed? Um, is that considered the same sort of thing as study of the Bhagavatam? Yeah, that's a, that's a nice question. It, it's interesting. Um, when we study our Gaudiya history, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would actually have most Bengali devotees, because uh, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat is almost all Bengali. Chaitanya Charitamrita has a lot more Sanskrit in it, uh, but Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, it's easier to read and full of pastimes. He would actually have his devotees read Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat first because Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, I mean, when we look at the Adi Lila, there is such intense philosophy there. Uh, I mean, the ontological position of every tattva is given step by step. I mean, even starting with Guru Tattva. If you really want to understand Guru Tattva, first chapter of Adi Lila gives a full breakdown of who Guru, who's the spiritual master, uh, three different types of spiritual master. I mean, it, it, it goes through each tattva very, very <laughs> elaborately. It, whereas Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat just goes straight into Leela, right? It, it's such a, a sweet flow. But Sri the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura would say that all of the conclusions that are established in Srimad Bhagavatam are clearly established in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. So by reading Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, you'll get all of the uh, everything that's established in Srimad Bhagavatam clearly established through kind of this free-flowing live streaming Leela. But in Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, yeah, later pastimes, um, you know, when we yeah hear about the Antia Leela pastimes, still we, Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami has written Chaitanya Charitamrita where one was never going to be confused on the position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So should we systematically read books from beginning to end? Absolutely. We'll get a very clear picture. <clears throat> but at the same time, Sri the Prabhupada would sometimes say, wherever you open up the book, right, it's nectar. And it can be a little... Uh, I would say discouraging for some to, you know, if you're like, okay, you have to absolutely understand the beginning Adi Lila before you go on to Madhya Lila, Anti Lila. Uh, I mean, you can reread Adi Lila. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's such an amazing book. Everything is, everything is in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. You want to study all the books of the six Goswamis? Everything is there in essence in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. I mean, literally everything is there in Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's quite amazing. So it depends on the person, what their uh, role is in devotional life, what their adhikar is. If they're just focusing on the Antia Lila, not making an effort to understand Adi Lila, I think that's a problem but still you're still going to get so much mercy by diving into any of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I mean, what to speak, 
the Antialila ends with the Shikshastakam prayers. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of tattva there throughout Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. But maybe we can hear uh, some <laughs> realization from, from you. And so we can get some clear instruction. Thanks so much, Prabhu. Yeah, we can see how in the early days, uh, Srila Prabhupada would uh, sometimes do Leela before he went through all of the um, tattva of Chaitanya Charitamrita, but he also did present the uh, tattva too, but not always, you know, kind of a systematic thing. He, he had not um, come out with his Chaitanya Charitamrita in the 60s. So, but we can see that the systematic study is, is the best and Prabhupada recommended. And also too, not to be discouraged, one can read through and then go back, you know, and get more and more out of it. Otherwise, you might be on a few pages of it for the rest of your life. But uh, yeah, so uh, thank you very much, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Sure. Mm. Hi, Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Parmesh. Thank you for the class. Thank you, yeah, so there are many people who worship Krishna. And um, they're trying to follow his instructions, Sarva Dharma and Parityaja, worship him, Manmana Baba Mad Bhaktu. They're trying to worship him. And uh, the worship of Gornitai is sort of chana, you know, hidden, unknown to them. So when they're hearing, like, what you're reading today, uh, some people have difficulty in accepting the Panchatattva and Gornitai as God. They, they see Lord Chaitanya with reverence maybe as a saint. So what is the position of such a person who does not accept the Panchatap and Gurnitai? Do they perish like a ridden cloud? What is their position? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I had some talks with senior devotees about this and, you know, how, how to understand that. In, you know, uh, Krishna Kavraj Goswami is coming straight out and saying they're daityas, demons, the suras against principles. And so, you know, uh, how, to, how to properly understand this is that, you know, Krishna Kavraj Goswami, when you see the what he's presenting in entire context, he's like, in every step of the way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna, He's giving every opportunity for someone to come to Krishna consciousness. I mean, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, God, who's chasing after people, teaching them Sarva Dharma and Pratyaja, Manmana, Bhava Mad Bhakto. You know, he's like <laughs> the most merciful incarnation, Namo Mahavadanyaya, that. Krishna Das Kavaraj is Goswami. He's just in this. How can one not take shelter of Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna? And so he's having this emotional outburst of, oh man, they're like Jarasandha and demons who, you know, are just so ungrateful. Right? That, that's like the more of the mood is that if somebody's trying to help you so much and you're not taking advantage of their help, and you're just like, oh, I'm not going to worship them. I'm not going to. Then, oh my gosh, that's so, so horrible. It's demoniac. So those who are worshiping Krishna, those who are worshiping uh, any, uh, you know, deity, they're they're worshiping. Uh, they're at least God conscious. They're going to get some benefit. That's stated throughout other parts of. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, you know, they're, they're going to be given a certain amount of mercy. At the same time, 
Tishum Satita Yuktaunam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam, that when they're able to come into the association of those who are uh, pure devotees, the, Krishna, who they're worshiping, will guide them to understand Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. And so this, yeah, Chana Avatar, he's hidden, but with TOVP, Srila Prabhupada, Krishna Consciousness Movement, right? this, more and more people are becoming aware of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and becoming more aware of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Their worship of Krishna is actually going to become easier. <laughs> I mean, uh, Srila Prabhupada wanted devotees to distribute Gornitai deities. Right? Just as we're, and then uh, one devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, but Prabhupada, they're going to go into the home of meat eaters. And Shri the Prabhupada said, even so, they won't take any offense. So, yeah, you know. And that's something that um, some um, Archita Prabhu, uh, Prabhupada disciple, lives in LA. He would actually point this out sometimes that. Um, Sometimes in Krishna consciousness, we focus so much on Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. We have pictures of Krishna in our home. You know, we have, but then, you know, where's our focus on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And, but then, right, focus then goes back to Harinam Sankirtan, book to, you know, that Adharya mood. We're actually going to get, become more magnanimous, connecting with the avatar of magnanimity. And so, whereas, yeah, our focus on Lord Chaitanya and Radha Krishna has to go together. And we can't try to separate them. And that's part of education, right? The, why are we having Chaitanya Charitamrita class? Why are we presenting Krishna consciousness in its full context? Is so that people can become educated. And that's part of our duty is to glorify Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu, so that people can have the opportunity to advance very quickly, right? Otherwise, there's going to be offensive offenses in worshiping Krishna, Radha Krishna, even chanting the Maha Mantra. Would you like to add anything on that? You're very much more realized than me on this aspect. Hare Krishna, Mother Parameshwari, would you like to add anything? Krishna Prabhu, thank you for your answer. I do appreciate you pointing out that we need intermediary, we need an intercessor on our behalf. And who is better than God himself, the Panchatatha Gurnitai? So we are attracted to that mercy. We want the magnanimity of the Panchatatha. So that uh, intercession on our behalf and the mercy factor, how they're freely giving love of God. And then we see that there is need for an uh, explanation, you know, like educating the public about the Pancha Tattva, the Tattva of the Pancha Tattva. So the more people actually know the glories of Pancha Tattva, um, the less Chana they are, the less hidden and the more people understand, we will understand our great fortune in having the Lord come in as our Daria aspect. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya and the Panchatattva broke open the storehouse of love of God and now it's our duty by our Guru's mercy to break open the storehouse of love of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> Jay. Right, it's getting... well, th thanks for all that, Prabhu. Just on that point, I just was Recently, I heard a lecturer, Srila Prabhupada. He said, do not keep Gornitai locked up. Do not keep them locked up. He was saying in worshiping of Gornitai, that bring, bring them out. And I thought, I was appreciating how you were saying, bringing them out means, yeah, this Harinam Sankirtan, book distribution, sharing with others, introducing Panchatava to others. So, yeah, so not to keep, not to keep Gornitai locked up. <laughs> and only for like our own personal worship and, uh, and then just another point uh mother permission was speaking on 
remember some years ago, I was speaking with one devotee and, you know, there's these great personalities, let's say like St. Francis of Assisi or St. Teresa of Lesseuse, you know, throughout the various traditions, there's been very saintly personalities and they may have not heard the name of Nityananda Goranga, um, but he just mentioned, and, you know, I'm not going to back, I'm not going to say this is necessarily a Shastri Praman, but um, if those personalities were to meet Mahaprabhu, he was sharing how no doubt they would join the Sankirtan. And, um, and so they may have not directly heard the name, but they were so much in that mood of that if they happened to have, you know, let's say they just went on pilgrimage and they met Lord Chaitanya, most likely their hearts would have melted uh, in, the, in that mood of Mahaprabhu's, you know, bhakti culture. So you might say, you know, hey, St. Francis, he never said the name of Nityananda or Goranga. Um, but if he had met Lord Chaitanya and associates, at least this Prabhu was sharing how most likely he would have united in, in uh, that spirit of bhakti with them. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Hi, Bhav Prabhu. I was just remembering a one quote from Nietzsche. He was saying, if I were to believe in a god, it would be one who could dance. It would be one who dances. It's like, here's a panchatapa. Take the people. <laughs> yeah. Nice quote. All right. It's uh, 920. We've got a little over, but thank you for your kind attention. Please forgive any offenses. And if I was able to present anything properly, it's by the grace of Shishi Guru Goranga. Jai Shivrindavan Das Thakur Ki Jai Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai Shri the Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you, Bala Prabhu. Wonderful good time.